The onset of the pandemic nearly one year ago sparked what has since become a huge transition for many people who are now working from home, thinking they may never go back to the office. It's not the only seismic transformation to the world of work, though, that may remain with us in the months and years ahead. And that's our focus for this morning, with some of your questions and a number of guests, including Andrew Au with us, who's the co-founder and president of Intercept, which is a consulting company that helps businesses respond to technological change. He's someone who knows all about work culture, and he's in Toronto this morning. Andrew, welcome to our show. Heather, good morning and thanks for having me. Well, I'm looking forward to tapping into what you know about and what the future is going to look like. In your view, Andrew, what has COVID changed most about work? Well, you know, Heather, I think we've had to rethink work, you know, everything from how do we engage our customers and the experiences that we deliver them to how do we even motivate the people on our team? How do we, how do we get them to be working more fluidly together? Um, operations, we've seen a ton of transformation here in terms of how do we take data, apply technologies to actually create value from that. Um, and I think we've had to rethink what does it mean to be innovative? Because innovation used to mean that we could lead industry. Now it's it's simply a requirement to do business. Um, and I think we've also had to re recheck our assumptions because before the pandemic, I think the whole concept of remote work, management always had this issue of, can I trust people to be productive from home? Can they be collaborative in a, in a remote environment? Can we be compliant? And we prove that we can do that. So that's a really interesting thing to pick up on, the assumptions. I was going to ask you specifically, this new reality of work from home, which seems destined to continue in some form or shape or form, which we can look at what you think it's going to look like in the future, but for, for mm -hmm. managers, for bosses, owners, what happens to collaboration? What happens to productivity? What happens to recruitment and development from the boss's standpoint, Andrew? It's a, it's a great point. I think that... Heather, you, you know, you, you think about the race that we're in. A lot of people think we're in a technology race, and, and I disagree, because technology, it's, it's all the same, right? That doesn't create difference. What creates difference is people, and, that, and, and so we're in a talent race, um, I'll say. So I think for, for, for businesses, it's how do you keep your top talent? I think that's harder than ever because the, the ability to switch jobs is easier than ever. If you're going to be working remotely, whether you work for company A or B, it's the same desk that you're working from. So you got to work that much harder. So I think it, it really places an emphasis on culture and how do you give people a reason to show up to work that's beyond, beyond a paycheck. Um, and so that's, that's, that's a big piece of it. And I think also, I come back to technology. Yes, it's not a differentiator, but it is also a requirement. It is a small hinge that swings a pretty big door. We have to get good about using the tools if we want to have more seamless collaboration. Okay. So a little bit of curiosity is needed on that front. So to bring in and keep the best talent in this new reality, technology, uh, a good work culture. But how do you create a work culture when people aren't dealing face to face and seeing each other every day? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And it comes down to, to, frankly, first of all, identifying what your culture is uh, and then finding ways to, to activate it. You know, some, some organizations are exploring with uh, Friday failures. Right. So that's every Friday they get around the table and they talk about the things and not just the triumphs and the wins and the successes. What are the things we failed at? What do we learn from that? That is what builds a learning culture that incents progress over perfection. So it's 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 new rituals like that, new habits that we need to form. From the employee standpoint, if we've talked about the employer for a moment, you know, again, yeah. how do they, and I'm thinking particularly maybe a new employee, how do they navigate this? Because how does someone who just starts a new job, how manage the career trajectory? They don't have opportunity to meet the bosses and show off their stuff in the same way. That's a, that's a great point. I think that it comes down to how do you, how do you walk the physical floor, but also the virtual floor? Um, and so how do you pop in and have these quick chats or IMs or quick calls? I think the thing we need to get over is that in a virtual environment, not everything has to be scheduled. Not everything is a 30 minute meeting. So it's okay to just call somebody and if they're available, they are. If they're not, they're not. Um, but I think a big part of being successful as an individual these days is how do you balance your professional and your personal lives? Because I think, Heather, the, the thing that we've, we've gained time as a result of not having a commute, but I'll tell you what we lost, 
is the ability to transition in and out of work mode. Oh, that's such we a good point. They're, they're all right? one and the same now, aren't they, really, for so it, many people? Exactly. And so if we're caught in this perpetual work mode and we're not building in recovery routines, we're not being our best version of ourselves. That's the key, is that to be more productive, we need to be able to take breaks. That ensures that we're, we're performing at our, at our best. And also, again, how do you walk that virtual floor? How do you peek in and just, you know, have those instant messages, have those calls? Not everything has to be a 30-minute call, scheduled call. It's really blown up the nine to five schedule, hasn't it, in so many ways? Uh, you know, it, yeah. when we talk about remote work, uh, there's a lot of discussion about a hybrid working model that will have yes. people in the office for a couple of days and at home for a few days. How do you see the actual sort of framework of a week in the future? Yeah, Heather, that's a great point. I think if I were to sum up, you know, what does that future of work look like? It is hybrid. It is people going from home in office and having some people maybe working permanently in office and some working permanently remotely. Um, so I think that we have to get good about how do we create harmony? How do we recreate that team flow here? Because that's really the key piece. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is that the nine to five in office five days a week is just it's, it's not going to survive. I think we're in office a couple days a week at best. And I think we're going to have more global teams, you know, being able to collaborate, yeah, across time zones. When you say that some are going to be in the office permanently, some are going to be at home, yeah. does that risk creating sort of an us versus them within the company? Absolutely. What's I think, risk Heather, that? that's, a, that, that, that's a huge risk because I think that it doesn't take a lot to have this feeling of somebody that, it, that that we're not on on an equal playing field. I think that the, the objective for the manager is to how do you create that level playing field? And think about before the pandemic, when you had a boardroom meeting and you had somebody conferencing in and you didn't have a shared screen and it was through one of these conference phones. Is that a great experience for somebody on the phone? Not really, it, right? So I think it, little things like that, you can make people feel uncomfortable. Um, and inhibit productivity. So the goal is how do you again, you know, invest in the right technology, the right meeting spaces, the right infrastructure, so that you're able to have productive meetings, both, you know, remotely is also um, in a boardroom. You need screens, you need platforms like Teams, um, you need these, these core infrastructure pieces. Technology key in, in all of this, obviously. Um, I'm wondering, we've talked through the morning, Andrew, as we've looked particularly as relates to International Women's Day and women who've borne yes. the brunt of so many of these changes. There are some who look to this, the office of the future as being a, an opportunity, an opportunity to become more flexible, to become, you know, different ways of performance assessments, to become even perhaps more empathetic. Now, how do you see that? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, I think that we have more choice, more flexibility, but it's up to us as to whether we take advantage of that, whether we leverage that. Because like I said, we go back to time. We've gained more time, but do, do I feel that we've achieved more work-life balance? Absolutely not. So I think that's a conscious that's a conscious decision. I think it's also on the employer, on the organizations to implement new rules. You know, what what, what are your flex policies because I think without the right governance you could have the options there but people feel hesitant to 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 use them to exercise them so I think having the right governance from the from the organization side um, is is absolutely critical to actually empowering something like that so paint the picture for me then I mean not everybody only 40 percent I believe is the number of people can actually mm -hmm. work from home so a lot of this has as yet to be sort of formalize this is all a period of transition but in your view what is the successful mm -hmm. office of the future look like i think the successful office of the future is the one that can harmonize remote and in office uh, teams the best i think that is really the key is creating that level playing field um, is because the thing is the grass is greener mentality always exists. The ones that are working in office think that the people working remotely have it best. They can do their laundry and their work and vice versa. The ones working remotely think the people in office, they get all the attention, they're plugged in, they're in the know. Um, it's about harmony. Whoever can harmonize that the best. 
Um, I, I think, again, too, is that we have all these new opportunities. We have a choice. Management, leadership, uh, individual workers, we have a choice. We can either return to work um, and, and, and simply have that survive mentality, hope for the norm, or we can rethink it. And that really is the opportunity. How do we rethink it um, to create better work environments, better products for, for, for consumers as well? Andrew, thank you very much. Andrew Au Thanks for having me, Heather. is the uh, co-founder and president of Intercept, and he's with us from Toronto this morning.